Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. Thank you, excellent God. We are swimming. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Thank you, marvelous Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, excellent God. Hallelujah, excellent God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive to the hearing ears. Come alive, come alive to the hearing ears. Come alive to those seeking wisdom. Come alive to those seeking truth. Come alive, excellent God. Come alive, come alive in their ear. Come alive in their hearing. Oh God, do they yield, hallelujah, sanctification till the sanctifying power of the Holy Ghost begin to move in them, through them, upon them, in the name of Jesus. They will not 
lean to the left, nod to the right, but they will trust you with all of the heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. We trust you today. We trust you through your word, through your written word. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you. We trust you, Heavenly Father. We trust you. We trust your word. Let your word be that hammer. Let that word, let your word come alive in us. Let your word come alive in us. Let your word come alive in us. Thanks so much, God. Let your word come alive in us. Hallelujah. Oh, excellent God, let your word come alive in us, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, let your word come alive in us, let your word come alive in us. Let your word come alive in us, let this truth come alive in us, in the name of Jesus. I thank you today, I thank you excellent God, I thank you for salvation, I thank you for the power of God, I thank you for the anointing of your righteousness. I thank you for the anointing of your word. Excellent God, I thank you for the anointing of your holy word. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for this anointing. Thank you for this word, God. Thank you for this opportune moment, God. Oh, Father, to let a dying world know that you are God and beside you, there is no other savior. There is no other God. In the name of Jesus, righteous lamb of God, Use us, use us, use us, use us as you see fit to use us. Use us, excellent God. Hallelujah. Use us today. 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 In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Wonderful Savior. We thank God for Jesus. Thank God for you, all of you, the Lord's people. Amen. I'm, I'm happy to know that you're with us today. Amen. Uh, Shirley Kennedy, I see you. Thank God for you. Layla Anderson, I see you. Thank God for you as well. All of you, the Lord's people, thank you for being with us on this day. Man, we came on a little bit late, but nonetheless, we're here. And we're going to go into the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lifeline. Thank you, Lifeline, for being with us on today. We appreciate you being with us. Amen. Thank you, Lifeline. God blesses to you. Choices blessings of the Most High God. May he rest, rule, and abide with you henceforth and forevermore. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And for those of you who are listening in and would love to participate amen you may do so by calling in amen just in case just in case if it's not working too well for you by way of the social media platform if you run into some problems and you're not hearing too well there on uh, YouTube or uh, Facebook live if your Facebook live account is not working too well or the YouTube is giving us some problems, you can dial in and listen at 701-779-9745. Amen. 701-779-9745. 701-779-9745. You'll be able to listen in. Amen. By way of a conference call. You have to use your, your telephone for that, but you will be able to amen, to listen in, and we'll be delighted uh, to have you with us on today. Thank you for this moment, amen, as we take a journey into the word of the Lord. Before we look at uh, this, we want to uh, let you know our purpose and why we're going the route in which we are going, amen. We've just finished uh, the New Testament, so from the book of Matthew all the way through the book of Revelations, we have gone verse by verse, verse by verse from Matthew through the book of Revelations. And uh, it is available, still available uh, on Facebook Live and also our YouTube Live. You would simply have to go to that page. And I wish I had a link before me. I'm gonna have to work on getting the link 
so that I can post the link there before you and that you can tap on that link and it'll pull up uh, those, uh, give you access to those uh, Bible lessons from the book of Matthew all the way to the book of Revelations that's in the New Testament. And we've done some Old Testament studies from the book of Genesis up to the book of Job, I'm thinking it is. I have to go back and find that, but most of those books we've dealt with uh, verse by verse. And uh, uh, today starts the day where we do, uh, um, we're going to do verse by verse study uh, through the prophetical books, the prophetical books. So we're looking at the prophetical books now, and uh, we want to talk about Jonah. Jonah. We're not going to start with Jonah today, but we want to talk about Jonah. Uh, Jonah is the book that was written about 862 B.C. Now, if you're not able to write, I wish that you were, but if you're not able to write that down, uh, preferably tomorrow we'll be able to repeat this again. So, uh, the book of Jonah. Jonah, uh, the prophet, is prophesying around about 862 B.C. And uh, we want to look at him. We're not going to start from him because he's not the book where uh, the prophet had been prophesying the longest uh, before him. There was one other before him. Jonah uh, was prophesying in 862 B.C. And then there's Amos, 887 B.C. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to start with Obadiah. We're going to start with Obadiah today. Obadiah is 887 B.C. And then we'll go to Jonah, 862 B.C. We'll probably do that tomorrow. And then we'll begin to look at Amos, 772 B.C. And Hosea, 785 to 725 B.C. And then Joel, uh, 800 B.C. Somewhere in there, we'll get it all together a little later, but I'm giving you the dates wherein they prophesied in, in, in within that year. Uh, Joel, 800 B.C. And then Isaiah was prophesying between 760 to 698 B.C. And Micah, uh, 750 to about 710 B.C. Nahum, about 713 B.C. Ne Habakkuk, about 626 B.C. Zephaniah, about 630 B.C. Zechariah, about 629 to 588 B.C. Ezekiel, about 595 to 574 B.C. Daniel, about 607 to 534 B.C. Haggai, about 520 B.C. Zechariah, about 520 to 518 B.C. And Malachi, uh, the last prophet that was prophesying before John the Baptist came on the scene, about 397 B.C. And then when he finished, you talk about that 400 years of silence. So uh, we're going to start with the prophetical books today. And then we'll be here for a while until we've finished these books as we did with the New Testament. When we're finished here, then we'll go to the poetic books. So keep us in prayer. Keep following us. And uh, we trust that you will gain insight, revelational truth, amen, and uh, the, the drive to just know more, want to learn more, and may God bless, bless you. May he bless you in that drive to learn more. Uh, the Bible incomparable, eh? Uh, incomparably the most widely circulated uh, of all books at once provoked and battled studied even the non-believers in its authority rightly feels that it is unintelligently to remain in almost total ignorance of the most famous and ancient of books even the unbeliever the non-believer have to look at it with great admiration they look at this Bible and, and, and they may not read it. <clears throat> they may not take the time to pick it up and, and, and bruise through its pages and, 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 and journey through its archives 
to gain insight. They may not do that, but it yet remain one of the greatest books of all time. The greatest book of all time. It remains the greatest book of all time. There are other books that you gain insight from it, but that insight only lasts you for this life. For this, this life. But this is the only book that prepare you not only for this life, but also the next life, the life to come. The life that is ordained by God. The, the Bible, that the book that carries the whole, that is entitled the Holy Book. It is, it is, it, it bears the, uh, uh, the, the, the title, the book of God, the, the Holy Book of God, the Word of God. And no other book has that. So we thank God for the Bible. Amen. So today we want to do our study. We're not going to go to, it was, I was so impressed, we wanted to go through and look at the book of Jonah. I wanted to start, start our study there, but we're not going to do Jonah today. No, we're not going to look at Jonah today, so just, just pray for us. Pray for us as we look at uh, this great book, Amen, of Obadiah. Obadiah. Amen. And may God help us here in this book of Obadiah. And, and I say that for a specific reason, amen, because I want to give you information as God give it to me, amen. As he give it to me, I want to also share it with you, amen. So let us look at this great book of Obadiah and see what, amen, um, what truth lies in it for us today. Today we want to title this lesson, how long will you keep rejecting the prince of salvation? That's what we're going to call this. Now, does it says that in the scripture of Obadiah? It does not. It does not say that. It, it comes across as a vision. It comes across as a vision. And this vision is centered around that of uh, Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob. This kind of So it takes you back. This is not that book that when you look at it, it, it highlights our future tense or present tense. But there's so much you can learn from this book that has to deal with the now. And we're going to look at that. Of what is it conveying to me today? Yes, 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 yes. And this is how we must approach every scripture in the Bible. What is this saying to me today? This, 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 this lesson is coming out of the Old Testament. We still see the Old Testament as a schoolmaster. So in this lesson from the schoolmaster, what can we learn today? How do we look at this prophetical vision of Obadiah and learn of what it's saying to us today? I'm not trying to look at this as uh, what he prophesied then. And how he prophesied it, that's not my approach today. I trust that you in your reading will be able to go back and see what the man of God is saying to the people. But I want to look at this from a different perspective because I'm asking God, how does Obadiah play a place in my life for this 21st going on 22nd uh, 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 dispensation? Yeah, this, uh, uh, this dispensation of time. What is, what is happening, God? Speak to us here concerning Obadiah. We're not, and there's, there's another Obadiah in the scripture. And that Obadiah was during the time of uh, uh, Elijah. We, we're not talking about that Obadiah. We're not talking about the one where uh, he, he became a great servant of the, uh, of the Lord and helping out other prophets who were well, under the spell uh -huh, of, um, and also under fear of, um, of Jezebel. We're not talking about that Obadiah. This Obadiah is not a lot of uh, uh, information about him. We don't know a lot about him. It does, even the Bible, even the scriptures that bears his name doesn't even talk a lot about him. It, it just says, uh, it, it just says, uh, that this is this is his vision, and he only gave one lesson out of this. 
So we want to look at this and say, how long will you keep rejecting the Prince of Salvation? Now, so to understand this title, how long will you keep rejecting the Prince of Salvation? Uh, there are a couple of things I want to do. So let me do this this way. Let me read the this one chapter. It's, it's only one chapter. So let me read this one chapter in your hearing. And then perhaps we can come back and, uh, and see what the Lord is saying to us. We'll do that this way. All right. The vision of Obadiah, and, and this is, again, is written uh, around about 887 BC, 887 years before Christ uh, in this, in that century. The vision of Obadiah, thus said the Lord God concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the heathens. Arise ye, let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathens. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Thou, uh, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that says in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as an, the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, since will I bring thee down, says the Lord. If thieves, ca uh, can, if, if thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they have enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are uh, uh, his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee, even to the borders. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of Mount of Esau and thy mighty men, O Timnah? Shall I, uh, shall, uh, uh, O Timnah, Timon, shall be dismayed to end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall come over thee. Thou shall be cut off forever. Let me read that verse again. Verse number 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shall be cut off forever. In that day thou shalt standest on the other side in the day that the strangers carried away captive his force, and foreigners entered into his gate, and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on thy brother of, uh, but thou, reading it again, verse 12, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathens. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk 
upon my holy mountains, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Ye, yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had been, had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame, the house of Esau for stubble and they shall kindle in them and devour them. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord has spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau and they of the plain, the Philistines, and they shall possess the field of Ephraim and the field of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanite, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. We thank God for the reading of this lesson and as we go back and look at this, let's take a closer look at what's taking place. So the Bible says that the vision of Obadiah, Obadiah the prophet, who was living in that era of time, approximately 887 BC. I would like to say somewhere about 900 to about 800 plus uh, BC, uh, Obadiah is living about a thousand, well, I'm not going to say a thousand years, but somewhere in there, 900 years before Christ, uh, the vision of Obadiah is prophesying about Edom. Thus says the Lord concerning Edom. This is not to everybody, but this is to Edom. You thought Edom got away. This was to something that happened. And uh, of course, during that time when Edom came to power, uh, well, when, when, when Edom actually was living, had to do a lot of years prior to this. This was many years prior, before, Je, uh, before I, I, well, right after Abraham, and Abraham had sons, uh, Isaac, and then from there later on, we, we understand. Let me just go back and bring you up to what has taken place. God tells Abraham, well, before God tells Abraham, to leave his father's house, he tells Abraham's father, Terah, to leave your children, leave your neighbor, leave your family, and go to a place I will tell you of. Uh, I don't know when God told Terah this, and Terah being uh, Abram's, fa Abram, Abram's father, starts the journey. How do I know he starts the journey? Because the Bible says he gathered up... Uh, uh, um, uh, Nahum, he gathered up when, when I say let, let me let me just glory to God, go to the word of God and then it says I have to keep my word close by thank you Jesus hallelujah just give me a few moments this was not something that uh, that I have notes with me and I'm following those notes, but because we have uh, been here before, uh, here's the scripture, Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11, and Terah took Abram his son, chapter 11, verse 31, and Terah took Abram his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go. They didn't go, but they were going to into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. 
and, and the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Why is Terah gathering his children? Why is he gathering all of them? And they're leaving the land of the Chaldees, and they're going to the place that God is telling them to go. This is important for us to understand that God speaks. God speaks, and the, the Bible gives us stories, portions of the stories, but this lesson was not successful. This lesson came at an abrupt end. So because it came to an abrupt end, we read over this lesson and we miss it. We don't always go back and follow the lesson because it didn't have a great success. But when we go back and look at it from the few pages that are there, it tells us in verse 27 of that uh, uh, chapter, it said, now these are the generations of Terah. Terah beget Abram, Nahor, Haran. Haran beget Lot, Lot, uh, and Haran died before his father. Verse 28 lets us know what happened to Haran. Haran died before his father. Terah in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milker, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milker, and the father of uh, Ishkar. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. Then it says, And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, grandson, uh, 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 his, his, his uh, son's son, grandson, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth. They were on the move. They were leaving. They packed up their bags like the Beverly Hillbillies, and they were on whatever they were riding. I'm only using Beverly Hillbillies as a... Uh, something so you can kind of understand the movement. They were moving, not uh, uh, one would move here and another move later. No, all of them together was in their bands, their caravan, and they're moving. And they went forth, uh, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of, the, of Canaan. And they came unto Haran, and this could have been a name of that place. He could have named his son there, or he could have named uh, that place, could have carried the name after. All I know is that he came into Haran and dwelt there, the place where his son died, Haran. And this is the son that he, his, his son was named Haran, and he stayed in that place. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. He died in the place of his hurt. How can I say his hurt? Because he died in the place where his son died. His son died there, and he was in the process of moving. And we know that it was the will of the Lord for them to leave the place. So he's moving with his whole family. Something happened. He did not come out. He ended up staying there longer. You can go and sin and stay there longer than what you desire. Lord, I'm coming out. I know it's your will that I be saved, but I'm coming. I got to go back and get something. I got to go back and, and, and Josephine been looking at me, Lord. I know I'm saved, but Josephine want a date. And you go out to date Josephine and lose your life. You were coming out. You were out, but you went back in to get Josephine and you died. You didn't come out. All right, Lord, you're saved. This is just an example. You're saved. The Lord saved you. But all of a sudden, somebody promised you a hand in marriage. They, they like you. They got that juicy fruit out for you. And, and, but they're not saved. You are. You're trying to make it. You're not knowing that they are uh, 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 in their lust. And here you are, unequally yoked. You're, you're, you're not fully convinced that he's legit. He sounds good, smells good, act like he's good. He's tall, dark, and handsome just the way you like him. And uh, you, you're looking at this thing and you're seeing how 
he can fit into your picture, into your life. And then you, oh God, give him me. Give that one to me, God. Somehow or another, you're not waiting for an answer. And you step out of line. You're in fornication. You're not married. Somehow or another, you end up losing your life. Uh, you may not lose your life, but you're off track. You're not praying. You're not fasting. You're not in his word. You're not in the word. You, 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 you're just slipping back. Slipping back. And you went back because of Jody. You went back and you stayed there a little too long. You can stay in sin a little too long. God's intent is for you to come out. But you went back for Jody. You went back for Bertha. And you stayed a little too long. And you can die in that place. And this is what happened to Terah, Abram's father. He was coming out. God doesn't have to speak. He's not speaking to nobody else. He's not speaking to, he's not speaking to Haran. He's not speaking to uh, Nahum or Nah Nahor. He's not even speaking to Abram. Why? Because Abram's father is living. And it's now Abram's father, it is, it is his responsibility to take care of Abram. It is, it is Kira's responsibility to take care of his son and his sons and, and all of them that are, are in his house. So God is not going to speak to Abraham yet or Abram yet. God's going to speak to the one who bears this responsibility. So he speaks to Tara. And Tara hears Tara understands Tira gets his family and he's moving. Heron dies in the place of call Heron. And Tira stays in that place. He's not moving any further. He dies in his hurt. You can die in your hurt place. Don't die in your hurt place. Let me say that again. To all of you who are on this line, do not die in your hurt place. Learn how to come up out of your hurt place. Learn how to get up out of that place and move. Don't stay there in your pain. Don't stay there in your rejection. Don't stay there in the midst of those who are bullying you. I do apologize for the freezing up. <clears throat> I, I do apologize and I hope that we are getting through. But if you want to, amen, um, hear us clearly. Amen. I know you want to look at us and we appreciate that. But if you go to 701-779-9745, 701-779-9745, that is our lifeline, telephonic line. That's our lifeline, telephonic line, and uh, you'll be able to hear us. You will not be able to see us, but you will be able to hear us. 701-779-9745. Nine seven four five, and I do apologize for the freezing up. And so, to get back to the lesson, uh, so you can stay in that place of your pain and miss God. Terra stayed there, did not have the unction again to move, did not have the willpower to move forward. It did not, and perhaps the word came to him again. All we know is he stayed in that place. He was trying to comfort himself, comfort his hurt, comfort his wound, comfort his pain, and he stayed there until he died. Do not stay in your hurt place until you die. He died in the place, and then the next time you hear about the story, God is now speaking to Abram. Get up out of the land of the Chaldees, and go to the place that I will tell you of. Leave your kindreds. And so he gathered up everybody that was in the bandwagon when they were leaving with Terah. And now all of them are leaving at the, the word that God gives Abram, but he starts the word in Terah. And they come out of the place. We read the story that God, uh, um, Abram have a son. Abram and... Um, Abram, he has a son of his flesh. And the son of his flesh, because he's like impatient, he has a son, and they name him Ishmael. This is his first son of his flesh, not the first son of promise, because he stepped out of the promise of God. Abraham 
listened to his wife. He and his wife, they talked, called themselves, let us help God. And in helping God, what they did was they created a son of their flesh. A son of impatience. A son of their desire. A son that, this is not the plan of God. The plan of God is, I've given you a wife. And she is, you're no longer two, but you're one. I've given you a wife. And that what you're going to dedicate to me. I want that child to come out of that oneness that you have with your wife. Because you're doing it my way. I've ordained marriage. And I'm honored that you're willing to uh, uh, commit yourself one to another. And that you've come together one to another. You're no longer two. But now you're one. So when you're going to give me something because I'm a complete God, I'm a loving God, I'm pure God, I'm honorable God, I am God and I love my people and I, and I appreciate you when my people will love my word. You marry, you join yourself together, you're no longer two, but you're one. When you bring forth a child into this world, God said the firstborn is mine. The firstborn son is mine. Give him to me. Dedicate him to me. Moses, uh, not Moses, Abraham, Abram, Sarai agreed. That, Baby, I'm not having no children here. And because I'm not having children, because I'm not having children, let's do it this way. Go into Hagar. Go into Hagar. And if you go into Hagar, perhaps you can have children by her. They agree. They go into Hagar. And as they go into Hagar, Hagar is pregnant now. Bears a son called that son Ishmael. Become the first son of Abraham. But it's the son of his flesh. God don't want that one. God don't want the son of your flesh. God want the son that he gives you. A son where you have committed your heart to God, your, your will to God, your desire to please God. That's what he wants. Completeness, wholeness. I don't know what is going on with this thing. Anyway, that's, that's what God wants. God wants your, 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 your willingness to love him, your willingness to honor him. Your willingness to serve him. One moment. We, we, we just trying to break through this thing. I'm freezing up again, people of God, that uh, I'm not trying to delay just because, but uh, we're having some freezing up problems. And uh, this thing is... Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anyway, we're going to move forward. Once again, if you're having some issues, if you're having some issues, and most of you are, that are listening to us by way of Facebook. I don't know how we're doing on YouTube, but if you're looking by way of Facebook, um, 701-779-9745 you dial that number they can listen in and uh, we have people on standby I'm pretty sure listening in the room I don't know amen but uh, uh, we're freezing up here on YouTube we're, we're, uh, I think it's Facebook Facebook live is freezing up I'm trying give me one moment people of God you who are are listening in uh, just give me one moment we just want to make sure that uh, we have uh, movement in YouTube we want to make sure that no one is freezing up on YouTube so just just pray with us for a moment we're going to get there amen we're going to get there hallelujah thank you Jesus glory to God just 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, we're going to... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah, we, we're, going to, we're going to get started. We're going to continue finishing. We're going to finish our lesson. But... Uh, Look like we're still having problems here on um, for those of you who are on uh, Facebook to follow us. You, um, if you want to switch over to YouTube, you can do so by James Williams. Uh, or keep pressing forward with James Williams. Keep pressing forward with James Williams. If you go to Keep Pressing Forward with James Williams, you'll be able to pick us up. Keep Pressing Forward with James Williams. Amen. Or listen to us by way of... Uh, listen to us by way of... of uh, listen to us by way of you... Of, of Lifeline. Oh my God. Listen to us by way of Lifeline 701-779-9745. Or you may follow us by way of YouTube. Amen. Yeah, we're freezing up on, on uh, Facebook Live, but we're here. We're going to continue. Amen. God blessings to all that are with us. Amen. We just lost some people. We trust that they'll find us again. We're going to drive on in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, people of God that are with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. So, uh, God blessed them, uh, Abraham and Sarah, even though they had a son of their flesh called uh, uh, Ishmael, God blessed him and said that 12, 12 uh, uh, lineage is going to come of them, and then they became a great people. And then the Bible says they went on about their business. We know that this became the Muslim people, and uh, but yet they are descendants of Abraham. All right? Now, fast forward to that of Isaac. Isaac have children, and one of them is named Esau, and the other one is named Jacob. This is where we have the story where there's a wrestle in the womb. Uh, there's Esau, there's Jacob, but then uh, their mother is, is pregnant, but then there's some war going on in the belly. And they're trying to figure out why am I this way? What is happening to me? Why am I going through this right here? And uh, come to find out why she's looking at this. What do I need to do? Why am I this way? Uh, she said, because inside of you, there's two nations of people. One is going to be stronger than the other. And then, so we hear about the story when it come out. Uh, there's there's Esau. Esau comes out first, and then there's Jacob. There's Jacob. Jacob is that son who who, who gets the birthright from his brother. He is that son, and uh, we, they ask the question: How is this possible? All because Jacob, it was in his heart to become first. He wanted to be first. It was an honor for him to become first. And that's what he wanted. Just let me be first. I just want to be first. And so in desiring to be first, uh, hallelujah, he steals or gets the birthright from his brother. I don't want to say steal, but manipulates his brother and gets the birth birthright. Now for Esau to lose the birthright, the, for Esau to not have respect for the birthright, to not honor the birthright is to, uh, and this is how that falls in place. And when you understand, no, no, I'm sorry. By me going this route, I want to tell you, don't think I'm just rambling. The reason why I'm going this route, because I want you to see something. And this is why, uh, this is why the man of God is prophesying here in Obadiah. Because you got to see this, and that's what I'm bringing to the forefront. So, when Esau 
uh, has no regard for the birthright. He sells his birthright. He looked down on his birthright. What good is the birthright concerning me? Not realizing that, hold up. By you being the first fruit, the first one, it is the Father's will to, 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 to bless the first one and dedicate the first son to God. The firstborn is mine, says the Lord. So when you look down on your birthright and you're, you're not honoring your birthright, you basically says, away with this. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. You don't care that that God wants you and you don't care about doing the will of God. You don't care about pleasing God. You don't care about moving forward in God. You don't care. Um, you don't care about carrying the Lord's name. You care not about honoring God with your life. And Esau basically said, I care nothing for that. He's saying, I'm just hungry. This represents the son of a, uh, your, 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 your flesh. Flesh says, forget the things of God. Man, I'm hungry. Forget the things of prayer. Man, I'm hungry. Forget the things of the spirit. Man, I'm hungry. Forget an anointing. I'm hungry. Forget walking with the Lord. I am hungry. If you will simply feed me, I'll eat. You talking about a birthright. Don't you see I'm about to die here? So the flesh thinks about itself, not the thing that honors God. So it goes to say, well, he sells his birthright to his brother. But he does not realize, he does not realize, had he not sold his birthright to his brother, the, 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 the lineage of Jesus coming down that line would have had to come through Esau. It would not have been the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It would have been the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But because of the prophecy, two nations are in thy womb. One of them will be stronger than the other, and the other is going to be weak. One's going to serve thy brother. So with that prophecy hanging over their head, you can see the, how manipulation is working, how other things is working to, to, to get that to be offset. And they're offsetting that plan. One moment. They're offsetting that plan that is going to usher in the presence of God. All because someone miscalculated, they, mis they were misinformed. Esau was just hungry for food, hungry for his flesh. He's the son of the flesh. He's not honoring God with his life. And because he's not honoring God with his life, yes, he comes through that and he sells his birthright. He gives up his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob said, that's fine, I'm good. I'm good with that. That's all I want in the first place. That's why we're struggling in the womb. That's why we're fighting. Because all I want is the birthright. So, to the lesson that uh, uh, we have in Obadiah, the vision of Obadiah, because you got to understand that spirit moves on. That spirit was mad that now his brother has the birthright. His brother has the blessings of the birthright. And Jesus, the Messiah, is going to come through that lineage of, uh, of, uh, of Jacob versus coming through the lineage of Esau. And that's all Isaac wanted. And that's all Jacob wanted was to carry the lineage of Jesus. Don't tell me how it was happening. I don't know how it was happening, but it's lining up. So that spirit of this thing lingers on. The spirit of Esau is carried out. He's angry. He left his father. He went out when he saw that his birthright was stolen. He went down to a place he was not supposed to go. He married a girl that he was not supposed to marry. Why? Because it, dis it dishonored his father. Because the wife says that they're not going to have part of me. The son of the bondswoman will not have 
part with the free. So they're going to live that. They're going to honor that. You got to understand who's that speaking, who's speaking here. These are the patriarchs. The patriarchs are the tone setters. The patriarchs are the trendsetters for everybody's life. Everybody's life who's on the face of the earth. That's why they call them uh, uh, patriarchs. God is honoring their steps. And what they say becomes golden. And here, Sarai says, uh, my son will not have part with the bondswoman. Cast her out. She, my, my son is not going to have part with that. They're not going to be friends. So later in life, now, send him away. He goes, he see how it dishonors his father that he marries into that lineage, into that family that is now an outcast that had to be sent away. I, I, I know this is the son of my flesh. They're still my sons, but yeah, he went there and he married into that family. He became a, a, fa a, a lineage, an offspring, a family unto those of the Ishmaelites. He partners with the Ishmaelites. And this became a great abhorrence, a great uh, offset to that of uh, uh, his father. The Obadiah picks it up and it says, thus says the Lord God concerning Edom, that spirit, Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador sent among the heathens. Rise ye, let, up, uh, let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathens. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that, um, that says in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? You've raised up. You've got some power. You've gotten a little authority. You've become a mover and a shaker. You're doing some things. But then you allow your pride to lift you up. Let's look at that spirit of uh, Lucifer. Look at how that spirit of Lucifer is working uh, behind the scene. You thought it was all about Edom, but look at how that spirit of Lucifer has gotten uh, intertwined in that thing. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, uh, since will I bring thee down, says the Lord. Yeah, the manipulator. The Lord recognized the manipulator working through uh, his son. If thieves came came to thee, if thieves by night, how art thou cut off? Would uh, would they not have stolen thee, uh, stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How art thou the things of Esau searched out? How are the hidden things sold up? So all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the borders, the men that were at peace uh, with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. When you've walked with people and you've so easily swayed the wrong way, O oh, Edom, when you walk with people and their, 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 their path is not to help you back to grace. Their path is to lead you from grace. And you connected with a people that has been ostentous. You connected with a people that is going against the plan of God. You've connected with a people that don't want to do it God's way. You've connected with a people that want to rebel against the plans of God. You want to connect with a people that is not going to honor the path in which I'm sending my son. You want to make it hard. And then you want to swear that you would kill them. You said this, Esau. And the people, the people you connected with, the people you connected with who have uh, watched them uh, 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 with, with great disdainment because you were put out. And now you're put out. You're angry. And there's a prophetic word hanging over your head that you will dwell in the midst of your brethren. 
and you would be at their neck and every man's hand would be at your neck? That's a prophecy. That's not a good prophecy. When you would dwell in their midst and then this thing comes to, I, I mean, where, 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 where uh, all of a sudden you dwell in the midst of that and you want to kill your brethren and your brother want to kill you. But you thought that was the main thing. Let's read a little further. Shall I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thou mighty men of Teman shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount, every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. When the Lord will slaughter them, will have them slaughtered. Here's what it says. But thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall come over thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. This is the main reason. This is the main, verse 10 highlights the main reason for this book of, 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 of Obadiah. This is the main reason. You, you, you're finding it here in verse number 10. The reason is, for your violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And it's going to explain a little bit more. In the day that thou standest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his force, carried away Jacob's force, in the day that the strangers came and carried away his force, the foreigners entered into his gates, cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou was as one of them. You didn't even help them. You didn't even come to their aid, O oh, Edom, Esau. You didn't come to your brother's aid. This become an indictment against you. When you seen your brother with the fault and you didn't help him. The Bible said, if you see your brother overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, come to him and help him. Re 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 restore such a one. This is an indictment against them as well. When you see your brother overtaken and you turn your head not to help them, when you turn your head and let violence overrun them, you see the danger coming and you turn your head and you let the violence come, you let the evil come, you let the malicious men, men of anger, men who are murderers and thieves, you let them come. God blesses to you. Uh -huh. God blesses to you, Pastor Deborah. I see you. And uh, Pastor Charles Wisdom Rogers, I see you. God blesses to you. Amen. All of you, the Lord's people, those of you who are still with us, Evelyn Carter, God blesses to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Zeddy Anderson, God blessings to you. For a moment, we've lost quite a few people that was with us earlier. That we were freezing up. Amen. I don't know if it was on Facebook and YouTube or what. I don't know. But, amen, we're trying to get back and keep moving forward. And it says, For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou standest on the other side, you didn't even come to his help. You stood on the other side. And the day that the strangers carried away captive his force, disarmed your brother. You watched them disarm your brother. You didn't help them. The foreigners entered into his gates. You could have stopped them. You could have ambushed the enemy. You did not. Cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou wast as one of them. You were as one of them who helped weaken them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother, the day that he became a stranger, looked at him, and, and, and you saw him being humble, being uh, 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 violated, and you wouldn't help them. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the days of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced proudly in the day of distress. This is an indictment against Judah of Edom. But when you look at this as an indictment against Edom, it's also an indictment against us. Because how do we respond? We respond just like Edom. We respond just like uh, 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 Esau did. Forget carrying the birthright. 
What good is this old birthright concerning me? What do I need a birthright for? Man, I'm hungry. I, I don't need that. I'm hungry, man. And you hear it all the time. We hear it as if it doesn't matter. Man, please. Uh-uh. My husband wants children. That's not my will. That's not my plan. No, uh, mm -mm. I'm not having no children. Baby, what's your purpose? What's, what's your purpose in life if you're not here to help carry out the plans of God? Now, it's all of a sudden, you're looking at it as your plans. Your plans. I don't want children. And then you're looking at men as if you have the choice in the matter. You still a help me. You still you are still birthed to be and help me. You are born to be and help me. Help me. But all of a sudden, you are the gift. You are the gift, and you have to have it a certain way. Listen. Do you know where that came from? Do you really know? Do you really know where that came from? I I, I hear you. I hear you, my sisters. I hear you. But do you really know where it came from? Do you really understand the perils, the danger of even saying that? I don't want no children. You want to get married, but you don't want no children. And you want to, 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 to use the birth controls and you want to do these other things, but to prevent children. You don't want them. You're basically saying, whatever plan God have, I don't want no plan of that. To bring forth a child and my firstborn becomes his, I don't want no plan of that. I don't want, I don't want that. God says the firstborn is mine. And you say, I don't want that. You didn't realize this was in the book of uh, uh, of, of uh, Nahum, uh, 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 Obadiah. This is speaking to Edom. This is speaking to the one who uh, uh, forfeited his birthright. This is speaking to the same one who, if he had not forfeited his birthright, Jesus would have came through his lineage. That would have been Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. But it's not a Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. It's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob says, give me your birthright. Esau says, what good is a birthright when I'm hungry? What good is a birthright? Man, I'm starving. Give me a birthright. Give me food. And for that person that says they don't want children, for that person that says, no, 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 he's not on my level. When that, birth, that person that says, no, nah, I don't like him because he's, He's short. I don't like him because he's this. I don't like him because he, he bald. I don't like him because he's fat. I don't like him because he's all these different things. And now you're making choices. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna bother you because I, I must admit I, we're at a place too that we look at people and we base a certain judgment off of them to see if they if, if they can handle that level that we walk in. We walk in a certain grace. We walk in a certain level. There's an anointing on our life as well. But the thing is, we want to move forward because we want to please the king. We want to leave a legacy. We want to have children. We want to. We want uh, uh, our children to have a good mother. A, a good mother is going to teach them the things of God. Father and mother teaching them the ordinance of God. Do it the way God has ordained it to happen. And when you start having your children out of wedlock, they're not in the plan of God. And that's why God rejected um, uh, 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 Ishmael. But Abraham went outside of his marriage and he slept with uh, uh, Ish, um, uh, 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 Hagar and got her. That was not the plan of God. The plan of God is to be married, have your children, Give me the first one. You take the rest. He's helping God. He steps outside of that. And God said, no, because you stepped outside of that, that's not mine. I don't want that one. Is God hateful toward Ishmael? God is not hateful toward Ishmael. It is not Ishmael's fault that he came into the world. It's Abram's fault. 
But God says, I don't want him. I want the one that I promised you I'm going to give you. I didn't ask you to help me, Abram. That's an indictment against Abram. And then God come back and say, because he's yours, I'm going to bless him. I will bless him. But you're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to deal with the son of your flesh. Because did you know what you're going to do? For the rest of your life, you're going to have to deal with this thing. He's not going to be easy to deal with. Because he's the son of your flesh. And from this day forward, we who are here, we who are saved, we who have the spirit of God in our life. Are you not wrestling at time with your flesh? Your flesh want to do things. Your spirit, I mean, your flesh want to do things. Your spirit don't want to do. When your spirit want to do a thing, your flesh says, uh-uh. And your flesh become a, an enemy against your spirit. Your flesh become a, a, a violator against your spirit. Your spirit says, go on a fast. Your flesh says, not today we won't. Your spirit says, I need you in a, in a consecrated place to pray until heaven responds. Your flesh says, not today we won't. We will not hear from heaven today. Not if I got to pray. No, you're going to fall asleep. And uh, if you don't wake up, if you don't wake up, if you don't wake up, no, 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 you're going to miss out. Your flesh does all those things. Your flesh would get you caught up. Your flesh would get you distracted. That's, that's that Esau. That's that Esau working. How dare you look at your brother overtaken and you look the other way. And that's what, that's what is happening here in this book of Obadiah. One chapter, but there's so much in it. Neither should uh, thou have stood in the crossway to cross to cut off those of his that did escape. They escaped, but you stand in the way of them that escape. You stand in the way of sinners. You're sitting in the seat of scorners. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. They remain, but you want to stand in their way. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathens as thou hast done. As thou hast done it, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. You've come and you got to go back and look at this lesson, look at the title. How long will you keep rejecting the prince of salvation? Come on, Ob uh, come on, Edom. Come on, Edom. Come on, O, -O, -O Esau. Remember how, because you forfeited your birthright, did you know what you did? You're basically saying that, no, I want food over birthright. I want food. I want to feed my flesh over doing the principles of God. Jacob says, I want the principles of God. I want to give God children. I want to raise up a nation of people that will obey him. I will bless my children. This is what Jacob represents. Esau represents my flesh. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. And you've got with a people who are the enemies of Jacob. You band with them. You might well become one of them because you did not help your brother. And this is what Esau, this is what Obadiah is saying in this lesson. And it says here, uh, verse 15, For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathens as thou hast done. You, you, you're in that family. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathens drink continually. They're going to get wasted. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been, has not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be delivered. Upon Mount Zion, 
upon Mount Zion, upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. There's still a chance. There's still a chance for a breakthrough. There's still a chance for revival. There's still a chance for a turnaround. There's still a chance for you to acknowledge your wrong. I saw you, I saw my brother in his blood and I did not help him. I saw him cry out and I did not help him. I heard him. Help me, please help me. And I would not help him. But upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall possess their possession. The house of Jacob. You turned against Jacob because he took the birthright. Yes, you came in faint. You could have cooked your own food. You know how to cook. It's not, see Esau, it's not that you don't know how to cook. Because even your father said, uh, bring me, go out and get me some venison that, um, that you cook. I like the way you do it. Make me some of that venison, bring it to me. But you came in a day when you were hungry, know how to cook, but you did not cook. You looked at that red pottage, the red beans that your brother had, and you wanted that. You're selfish, Esau. You were selfish. You wanted what he had. But you know how to cook Vincent. You know how to cook deer meat. You know how to cook beef. You know how to cook. He's making beans out the field. You a hunter, Esau. But you refused to take care of that thing. And he saw an opportunity to manipulate you. If you give me your birthright, you could have some of these beans. That's all he wanted. What you had, Esau, was even better. You saw the redness of the beans. Give me the beans. Well, give me the beans. If you give me the beans, yeah, give me the beans. And he says, what good is this? Man, what good is this old birthright to me? I'm about to die and you asking for a birthright? Take this old birthright. Doing me no good because you devalued the birthright. Do you know with the birthright, you become the father's eldest. You're the eldest one of the family. Now everything hinged on you. All of the lineage, all the families, all of the, all the lineage comes through you now because you receive everything. Everything comes through you. The firstborn. You pass it, the father passes it down to the firstborn, the firstborn passes it down to the others. And you say, what good is this birthright? I'm going to tell you what was good with the birthright. Because if Esau would have kept the birthright, it would have been Ab the blessings of Abraham, the blessings of Isaac, <coughs> and the blessings of Esau. But because you despised it, it's the blessing of Abraham, the blessings of Isaac, and the blessing of Jacob. <coughs> because Esau despised his birthright. And here comes Obadiah to talk about it. 7 you don't know a whole lot about Obadiah, but Obadiah is explaining this. He prophesied this back in 887 BC when you thought it was a God just looked the other way. Nothing happened to that. Nothing happened. Obadiah, I mean, uh, Esau just went on about his life. No, he did not just go about his life. The spirit of Esau lived today. That same spirit that, that, that is angry with his brother is in the church today. Did you forget the scripture that talks about his hand will be about thy brother's neck and his brother's hand will be about his neck? He will dwell in the midst of his brethren. That's talking about Esau. I mean, that's talking about Esau. It was talking about, uh, uh, it talks about Ishmael, but it also talks about Esau. How does it talk about Esau? There are two. Ishmael and Esau is different. Ishmael and Esau is different. True. But when his father, when, when Esau saw that it did not please his father, he was mad. He was angry. Because the father blessed Jacob instead of him. Well, you gave the birthright to Jacob. 
Now it's only fitting for Jacob to carry the birth, uh, the, 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 the blessing of the birthright. But he's angry with his father now. And so now that he's angry with his father, he said, I don't give a care. My father don't want me to marry the daughter from this land. I'll go there anyway. So whose house does he run to? He run to uh, uh, Ishmael's house because he saw it displeased his father. So when you look at Ishmael, when you look at Esau, you're looking at them one and the same. So when Ishmael came against his brother, so does Esau come against their brother. And when you see how uh, 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 when they came and plundered Jacob, Esau was as, as if he was right there. He was in the midst. He didn't care. He did not stand up and say, hold up, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. I'm, I'm his twin. We're not doing this. But he would not do that. He consented to seeing them fail and, and, and being happy that they will overran. And we have that ignorance. We have that spirit in the church today. How dare you argue with your brother and your sister? How dare you argue with your husband and wife? Wife arguing with the husband. Husband arguing with the wife. Wife don't want to see husband succeed in ministry. A husband don't want to see the wife succeed in ministry. How are you two? I mean, how are you one? You're no longer one, you're two. You're divided. How's the oil flowing? The oil is not flowing, the oil is stagnant. The oil is not flowing anymore. Because God operates in obedience. God will always be God. God will always be mighty. God will always be anointed. God will always love his children. But his children can get it wrong. His children could get it wrong. How does the children get it wrong? Because the children could walk in a comfortable place under the umbrella of God's anointing. Walking under the umbrella of God's anointing, but now they are not walking under the, 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 the blessings of Jacob. They begin to follow what Esau did and begin to hate their brother have the hand at their neck, angry with them. Anger is in the house. Anger is in the church. Anger is in the community. But because we got comfortable with an anointing, we feel we can still uh, 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 flow, baby. Flow in the spirit. Flow in the word. Flow in prophecy. Flow. Oh, God, speak. I got a word. Baby, you've missed out. You've missed out. All of a sudden, you're following that comfortability of being in that comfortable place that's wrong. And just because God did not snatch his anointing from you, you're thinking you're right. You're not right. You may speak the right thing. And because you're speaking the right thing, the principle has been missed. The principle of God been violated. God loves righteousness. God loves truth. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. When you step outside of that, God does not cease being truth. He does not cease being honorable and loving and true. He's still that. So he's not coming at you just because you uh, didn't do right. He's still the standard of our lives. And you feel we can flow. Oh, I can still flow. I got this anointing. I'm under the umbrella of this anointing. Where's my, where's my, where's my thing at? I, I don't see it. But I'm still under the umbrella of this anointing. And you're so wrong, but you still learn how to flow in the anointing. It's spiritual. Because it's spiritual, you can still flow in the anointing but yet be wrong. You can still flow in the anointing and still hate your brother. You can still flow in the anointing and still not see things the way God see it. You can still flow in the anointing and be angry with your husband. Flow in the anointing and be angry with your wife. Flow in the anointing and be upset with your pastor. Flow in the anointing and, 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 and miss out on everything. 
and think you're so right. These are the things that happens to us and we have to make sure that we get to a place to say, Lord, lead me and guide me. Don't let me fail you. We must constantly come back and purge, God purge me again today. Don't let me be angry with my husband. Don't let me be angry with my wife. Don't let me be angry with my children. Don't let me be angry because when you are angry, that same spirit of Esau, that same spirit of Ishmael, Two different people, but Esau partnered up with Ishmael. I'm giving you the word, baby. Ish, um, Esau partnered up with Ishmael, went down to his house, dwelt there, married into the family. So they are now one and the same. What Esau do, Ishmael do. What Ishmael do, Esau do. And each one of them gonna have to pay the consequences. You're in the house of the Lord and fighting your brother, wanting to choke them, strangle them. That's all because that same spirit is dwelling. But look what the Lord says. <laughs> but the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathens. Call them heathens. They don't want to commit. They don't want to submit. They don't want to bow down. They don't want to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Upon all the heathens. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon your, my mountain, my holy mountain, so shall all the heathens drink continually. And they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion, upon holiness, upon righteousness, upon the word of God, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. What? Who's there? Who, who is the there? There is all of Esau's possession, all of Ishmael's possession. Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, they shall kindle in them and devour them. There shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. You say, oh, Lord Jesus, oh my God, that's pretty rough, God, that's pretty rough. Well, go back to the, go back to the top. How long will you keep rejecting the Prince of Salvation? God come to give you salvation. Every time a preacher preaches, he's coming to give you the salvation plan of God. Every time an intercessor, a missionary, a prophet, a prophecy, a prophetess, whoever, give you the word of the Lord and says, warn the wicked, come out from among you them and be ye separate, said the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. When they give you a word, tell you to turn from sin and you refuse to turn from sin. When you refuse to turn from sin, God says, Hallelujah. You are the one that's turning away from your possession. You're the one that is, that's violating that plan. And there shall not be any remaining in the house of Esau, but the house of the Lord hath spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the Mount Esau, and they of the plain, the, the, the Palestinians. And they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria. And, the, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead and the captivity of his host, this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, uh, and the Canaanites, and, and the captivity of Jerusalem, uh, which is uh, Shepherd, shall possess the city of the south, and saviors shall come up uh, on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom, and, sh and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. People of God, this prophecy was over 800 BC, 800 years before Christ. And when you look at what Obadiah is saying, this it doesn't end right there. It's not just to that people. How does it help us to this day? I've told you how it helps us to this day. I tell you how this prophecy speaks to us to this day. But it also carries on until the time of Christ. I mean, until the, the, the next coming of the Lord. And when he returns, when he returns to gather his people, people of God, I thank God for this lesson. My time is up. I've got to 
I've got the finish. I've got the end. But we're at that place now that I want to ask you, how long will you keep rejecting the Prince of Salvation? How long? Yes, we're in the prophetical books. And this is the first of the prophetical books. We're looking at the book of Obadiah 1 verses 21. What is it saying to us today? What Obadiah is saying to us today is how long will we keep rejecting the Prince of Salvation? The Lord came to bring us salvation, but will we be like Esau? Will we be like Ishmael? Will we continue to fight against our brothers? Will we continue to get it wrong when the Lord has really come to help us? Will we continue to stand on the path of wrong? Don't do that. Stand on the path of right. Join with your brother. Don't fight against your brother. Amen. My time is up. I've got to close. But if anyone is on the line and you're hearing this, and uh, I want to ask you to look back over your life and ask God, Father, how can I get this right? I, I, I don't want the spirit dwelling in me or on me where I'm become more of a fighter, a fighter against righteousness. No, I want to fight for righteousness. I want to stand for truth. And I need your help. Father, forgive me. It starts with you saying, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And one thing about forgiveness is there's a, there's a thing called repentance and there's a thing that's called repentance. Forgiveness and repentance. Saying I'm sorry is one thing. Saying I'm sorry. Saying I repent is one thing. But true repentance True repentance. What did the Bible say? What work is repentance? What work is repentance? Godless sorrow. Work is repentance, but godless sorrow is not repentance. Let me say that again. Being godless sorrow is one thing. Being godless sorrow is one thing. But godless sorrow only work repentance. Repenting is, is another thing. And it's uh, uh, being God, sorry, worketh, get you to the place to say, God, I am so sorry for the wrong that I've done. That now, when you say that I'm so sorry for the wrong that I've done, here is true repentance. To turn completely and never go back. Make a vow to never return and never return. Don't look back. Father, if you save me, I'll save you, I'll serve you all the days of my life. Don't let go of my hand. When my hand get weak, keep me. When my heart fails, keep me. When my mind fails, keep me. If I fail, keep me. Don't ever let me go back. My word, Father, let my word be bond. That I live for you from this day forward. Don't let nothing rob me of this word. Don't let me get spiritual amnesia where I forget my word. You save me, God. I'll never go back. Don't ever let me go back. You have that prerogative over your life. You can say that over your life. You can make that declaration over your life. Most of the time, people don't want to do it because they say, you know, and you'll know when they don't want to live right because they won't say that. They will not say, I vow, God, that I will not go back because they want to go back. They're not finished being sinners. They're not finished with sin. But when you can boldly say that, Father, save me and keep me so that I will not go back. I will not go back. I cannot go back from where you brought me from. I can't go back to lying. I can't go back to stealing. I can't go back to fornication and adultery. No, Father, save me. Forgive me of all of my sins. And I vow to love you forever. If you was a liar and you ask God to forgive you of the lies, you don't continue lying. There's nothing different about you. If you was a hater and you ask God to forgive you of, of hating, you don't continue hating. There's nothing different in you. And, it, and that's the same way it is with any sin in life. Any wrong that you're doing, you ask God to forgive you. You make up your mind right then. I cannot go back to that. Whatever you do, Lord, I cannot go back to that. 
and you turn and it becomes a, 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 a premeditated plan to never go back to what you used to do. I can't go back. I must serve you all the days of my life. Lord, let it be so. And when you really mean that, you'll pray this prayer with me. Father, I commit my life to you. Forgive me of every sin that I've ever committed. I'm yours, Lord. And I vow to serve you all the remaining days of my life. Keep me and fill me with your spirit. Seal my life to the day of redemption. Give me power to stand. As your word says in the book of John, John 1, 12, as many as receive you, to, you, to them you give power to become the sons of God and to them that believe on your name. Father, give me this spirit. Give me the spirit. Give me this power to stay. Give me this anointing to stay. Give me this anointing to do your will. Give me the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he will keep me in perfect peace when my mind stayed on you. Lord, I love you and I surrender my life to you and I thank you for hearing my prayer and I thank you for saving me this day in Jesus' name. God bless you, God keep you and heaven smile upon you for everyone who said that, amen. Be thou advanced in the realm of the spirit and do great exploits. Love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your might, with all of your strength, amen. And don't stop pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. Keep loving God. Keep running on and let God live through your life. God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you all for being with us on today. Amen. Keep doing what you're doing. The lifeline is online. Uh, thank God for your Facebook Live. Thank God for your YouTube. We've had some problems early. We were freezing up. We keep praying for us. And we come tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're looking at uh, the book of, uh, uh, today we were looking at Obadiah, Obadiah, one of the prophetical books. We thank God for that. And the Lord allow us to be here tomorrow. We want to come and we want to look at the book of Jonah. Thank God. Keep praying for us. And we look at the book of Jonah on tomorrow. Amen. We'll start there. Have a blessed day. Go in the strength of the Lord. Amen. And be blessed.